If you really want to improve your virtual desktop or AirLink experience, you need to figure out what Wi-Fi channel to use and how wide of a channel to use. Now, if what I just said makes no sense to you, I'm going to try and simplify it down to make as much sense as possible. This video is assuming that you're using a dedicated router for your Quest, and this means that your router is connected to your PC and used exclusively for wireless streaming, which is the best way to do it. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out some of the other videos on my channel on how to set that up. But even if you're using a dedicated router, you need to opt some router settings by choosing the best Wi-Fi channel. If you want to see how big of a difference this makes, just skip to the end of the video where I demonstrate the worst possible settings to the best possible settings. And spoiler, it does make a big difference. So let's get into it. What do I mean by Wi-Fi channel and Wi-Fi width? Essentially, Wi-Fi has a variety of frequencies that you can use. 2.4 GHz is the name given to a collection of lower end frequency channels, whereas 5 GHz is the name given to the collection of higher frequency channels. So when you select to use the 5 GHz channel, your router is automatically deciding what specific channel within the 5 GHz range to use. For most use cases, the automatic selection your router does will probably just give you the best results for general Wi-Fi use. But for using virtual desktop, where every millisecond makes a difference, customizing which channel you're using and the channel bandwidth can help you to get the best possible results. A good rule of thumb is that you want the highest possible channel with the highest possible bandwidth, as long as that channel isn't receiving any interference from other Wi-Fi signals from like your neighbors, for example. So if you live in the middle of nowhere with absolutely no neighbors, then you could probably just go into your router, select the highest channel and the highest bandwidth and be done with it. But if you're like me and you live in an apartment or you just have a bunch of neighbors, you're going to have to do a little bit more work to get the best results. So let's like explain how these channels work. There are two aspects to the channel, the actual channel that you choose and then the bandwidth of the channel. So the actual Wi-Fi channels are listed as numbers from 1 to 165. Channels 1 through 11 are all 2.4 gigahertz channels, whereas 36 to 165 all represent 5 gigahertz channels. Essentially, you just don't want to use the same channel that other people are using. So if you have a lot of neighbors using channel 40, for example, which is pretty popular, by the way, you want to select a different channel. Also, the higher the channel, the better it is at transmitting data quickly. So if possible, just select the highest channel that no one else is using. Now, it actually does get a little bit more complicated than that. So let's talk about channel bandwidth. Channel bandwidth is how wide the channels are. So essentially, each channel is going to overlap with other channels. This is because each numerical channel is 5 megahertz apart, and the minimum bandwidth of a channel is 20 megahertz. So for example, if you're on channel 40 at a 20 megahertz bandwidth, that means that you'll be overlapping with channels 41 and 42. This is because channel 41 is 5 megahertz above your channel, and 42 is 10 megahertz above. Since your width is 20 megahertz, you want to make sure you have 20 megahertz of space above and below to avoid any interference. So simply selecting a channel that no one else is using isn't everything you need to do. You also need to make sure you're using a channel that isn't overlapping with channels that other people are using. Now, generally, they won't let you choose channels that overlap a bunch. So for example, you wouldn't actually be able to use 41 or 42. They usually only let you choose 40 and 44 because those two channels are far enough apart that anybody using those two channels with a 20 megahertz bandwidth aren't going to overlap with each other. But if you're using a higher bandwidth, it does get a little bit more complicated. So you basically have three choices for how wide of a bandwidth you want to use 20, 40 or 80 megahertz. As always, the higher option is better and will work best if your router has a direct line of sight to your headset. So for wireless VR streaming, you have to use 80 megahertz. 20 and 40 simply don't work anywhere nearly as good. Again, skip to the end of the video where I show you what it looks like if you want to see for yourself. So if your router is in the same room that you play in, you'll want to use 80 megahertz. But now selecting which channel to use is a little bit more complicated because with a wide bandwidth like 80, you're going to overlap with a ton of channel choices. In fact, you're going to want to make sure that no one is within 16 channels above or below your selected channel to prevent any possible interference whatsoever. So for example, the highest 80 megahertz channel that I can select on my router router is channel 161. So I just need to make sure that there's no one within 16 channels of 161. Or in other words, I just need to make sure that no one is using channels 145 through 165. This is because 145 is 16 channels below, and 165 is the highest possible channel that you can choose where I live. Now I'm just going to tell you right now that this is pretty much impossible. I'm in an apartment complex with a ton of Wi-Fi networks, so there really isn't a single channel that I can use that has zero interference. The best I can do is select a channel with as little 
little interference as possible. So let me show you how you can see what other channels people are using and how to select the best channel. To see what channels people are using, you're going to need to download an application that will check this for you. The one I like is called NurseSoft Wi-Fi InfoView. It's free, but it only works for Windows computers. And I assume you're using Windows because if you're using Virtual Desktop to play games, you kind of need Windows. But I mean, you could be gaming on a Mac or Linux system. I think Virtual Desktop works on Mac now. So anyways, I'll link to an article that has recommendations for all those other systems as well. But anyways, NurseSoft, which will also be linked below, can be downloaded for free. Just unzip the file that downloads and then launch Wi-Fi InfoView.exe. You won't actually have to install anything, just opening the exe file will launch the program, which will look like this. Here you can see every single Wi-Fi signal around your computer, as well as tons of information about those channels. The only thing we really care about is the channel column. Here you'll see a variety of numbers listed from 1 to 165. The first thing you want to see is your own dedicated router's channel, and you want to see if other people are on that same channel as you. When I checked, my router had me on channel 40, which surprisingly no one else was using. Before 40 is pretty low, so I wanted to try and get a little bit higher to see if I could get better results. So looking at the higher channels, I saw that a ton of networks were using 157. So I just wanted to make sure that whatever I did, I avoided a channel 157. I didn't want to use it or even overlap with it if it was possible. The highest I could go was 161, which was only four channels or 20 megahertz away from 157, meaning that if I'm using 80 megahertz, I'll definitely overlap with them. The only other option was to go for channel 149, which would still overlap but it was eight channels away or 40 megahertz so it should get less interference than 161. I looked around and saw that no one else was using that specific channel either so it looked like 149 would be my best option. Now one question you might have is what is more important, having a higher channel or having less interference? Well simply put, having less interference is way more important, which you'll see when I talk about my results testing this out. But before I show you that, let's talk real quick about how to actually change these settings in your router. To do this, you have to log into your router on your PC. Do this by making sure it's connected to the router and then going to whatever web address you need to access it. For my Asus router, I had to go to router.asus.com. Check your router's owner manual if you need to. Once you're at the right place and you log in, you can now change all of the settings for your router and all of its channels. So just select the settings for your 5 gigahertz channel, which for me was called the Quest Router. So I just clicked on Quest Router right here. And then here you should see a lot of different settings for that specific channel. Look for a setting that says something like channel bandwidth or just channel. For me, I had channel bandwidth and control channel right next to each other. Once you find the right place to put the settings in, just put in the right settings for you after looking at all the different networks. And for me, that was 80 megahertz for the channel bandwidth and 149 for the actual control control channel. Again, my settings will not necessarily work for you. While you should automatically use 80 megahertz as your bandwidth, the actual channel itself is going to be different depending on the networks around you. So don't just put in the same number as me and expect it to work just as well. Also, every router's interface, so unless you have the same exact router as me, it's probably going to look a lot different changing the settings. If you get lost, just check your owner's manual or look up a tutorial specific to your router. But once you input the right settings, just make sure you save it by hitting apply, save, or whatever it is, and then jump back into your headset and see if you notice a difference. So to show you how much of a difference this would make, I tested it on the lowest channel possible with the lowest channel bandwidth. For me, this was channel 36 with a bandwidth of 20 megahertz. Conveniently, there was nobody else on the same exact channel as me, so I wasn't really going to get any interference, so that was nice. But even then, my results were not good. I got a message from Virtual Desktop saying that the streaming performance will be degraded because it just wasn't getting enough you know, information, and the max bitrate I could select was only about 90 megabits per second. That said, when I jumped into the game, it looked good, and I was getting about 31 milliseconds of latency, which was great. And that is until I started moving around. And as soon as I did, I started averaging a much higher latency, hitting 50 or 60. I was also getting several spikes in latency and frame drops, and it just felt stuttery and laggy. It was not a good experience. I've definitely had worse, but it was not good compared to what I was getting before with the default settings. So then I tested it with the highest possible bandwidth at the highest possible channel, which was 161 at 80 megahertz. With these settings, I got the max bit rate up to about 130 and I had my latency sitting at a very consistent 31 milliseconds, never going higher than like 34. And that was even when I was moving around and throwing stuff. It was a much better experience and everything was smooth and running great. It felt even better than my original settings. Now to be clear, like I said before, you have to be on the 80 megahertz channel to get a good experience. So I tested both 20 and 40 megahertz just to see and both resulted in pretty poor experiences independent of the actual channel. So this means that 80 megahertz on a 
lower channel like 36 was actually better than 20 megahertz on a higher channel like 165. So again, to reiterate, the bandwidth is super important. Just make sure you choose the highest bandwidth. That's going to make more of a difference than anything else. But then that brings up the question, how much of a difference is there between a lower channel like 36 and a higher one like 161, if you're using 80 megahertz on both of them at least? Well, honestly, I tested this and I didn't see much of a difference. The latency was about the same and they both felt really stable. So while using a higher channel will theoretically produce better results and be better overall, I think it is much more important to just make sure you're using a clean channel that no one else is using and that it doesn't overlap with other channels. So if the only clean channel is 36, 36, go ahead and use 36, even if it's the lowest one. You'll be better off with a clean channel with no interference than you would with a higher channel that has more interference. That said, all things being equal, if you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no other channel to compete with, just use the highest channel. It will still theoretically give you better results. Also, remember that these tests and recommendations were with my Asus RTX 55 router setup as a dedicated router right next to my play space. If you're using a different router with a different setup, your results are going to be a little bit different, but the general principles remain the same. If you want to check out my router, it'll be linked down below. And if you want to know how to set it up and make sure you're using the right settings for virtual desktop or Airlink, check out this video here where I go over all of the basics of setting up this system. If you have any questions, you can always leave a comment or join our Discord. I'm always happy to help. But that's it. I'm out.